Hey everyone, last week we talked about detoxification and healthy weight loss. This week we're going to talk about water. You can live only, I think it's, you can live maybe three days without water. But today we're going to talk about what type of water should you drink, how much water should you drink, and why water is so important. So let's get into it, Jennifer. Sounds good. So I'm, I was thinking about um, this in a different order. Uh, so how much water, like when someone asks me how much water should I drink, or I say, are you drinking enough water? Um, why do I ask them this? You know, why is it so important for us to be drinking a certain amount of water? You know, we have, you know, our blood is made, how much of our blood is it? Something like 80% of our blood is water. Yeah, um, some, yeah. Yeah. I can't remember how much, but our, most of our body is water. We use water to transport nutrients, lubricate the joints. I mean, there's so, we need water for so many things. If you are tired, it may just be you're thirsty. Um, if you are hungry, it may just be that you are thirsty. And when you feel thirsty, you're up to, I think it's about, a, is it a pint or three cups? It's over a pint of yeah. um, water that you are dehydrated. You know, you're already lacking a pint of water. So if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. And so make sure that you are drinking enough to prevent thirst. And if you feel like you're hungry and it's not dinner time, drink a glass of water. That may be all you need. Drink a glass of water. And then 15 minutes later, if you're still hungry, then eat something, but it may just be that you are dehydrated. So that is one of the reasons why I tell people the first thing, you know, are you drinking enough water when we have certain conditions. Um, so I totally got off track because we were talking about how much water, but um, I recommend about half your body weight in water. Is that what you tell your, your clients? Yeah, at least half your body weight in water. And if they exercise and sweat a lot, even more than that, because you have to replace what you lose to your sweat. And, there, and the statistics show that most Americans are chronically dehydrated. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know about you, but a lot of the people, when I start talking to them, you know, think they're drinking enough. And when we actually start calculating it, which can be challenging, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we find that they really, I mean, they're not drinking water at all. You know, if you wake up and you drink coffee yeah. you know, all morning, and then maybe you have a glass of water here or there and a soda and the, or tea, <laughs> those don't count as water. They're liquids, yeah. but, but that doesn't, doesn't count as water. And so, so many people are dehydrated and things like, um, colas and teas, black teas and coffee, they are dehydrating. And so yeah. you're actually doing the opposite of what what you think you're doing when you're drinking those things yeah so um was the first thing you said was what type of water to drink and um, do you what want to power? get into that mm -hmm. yeah well <clears throat> this this is a big rabbit hole for a lot of people when I first started learning about it I, I wasn't sure I believed it either but when we were in the school of natural healing they talked about hard water a lot and hard water means it has a lot of dissolved minerals. Yeah. And these minerals are inorganic minerals, which means the body cannot process them. And so over time, if, if you drink hard water for, over time, these minerals can build up in your tissues, including yeah. your joints and your heart and even your brain. And of course, we also have the problem of pollution in our tap water. I don't know if you remember the new story from Flint, Michigan. I guess that was two years ago where they had a bunch oh, yeah. of lead in the water. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, I don't trust any of the municipal water systems because the world is so polluted today, it's impossible to get your water completely pristine. So that's why we recommend distilled water because distilled water is the cleanest water on the planet. What do you think? And I know that the second best water, I think, would be the reverse osmosis, but. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I know, I think we talked before, I have a countertop distiller, yeah. which is really right. inexpensive. And I use that. Now, I don't always, I don't use distilled water 100% of the time, 
but I also have a well that has filters on it. And so I'm a little bit different. I'm not on city water. Um, I do not like to drink city water. If I travel or I go to restaurants or things, you know, I'll just take tiny sips if I have to have something to drink. Yeah. But um, I'll, I usually, I actually have stainless containers that I carry my own distilled water in when I can, yeah. we'll talk about that, the care, what to put it into. Um, but I, I'm the same way. Now I live where our water is very hard. Um, you know, you get the little buildup on the toilets or the tub, you know, and even in the distiller, you know, it's amazing oh. how much product gets built up on the sides and things like that. And so when you think about it, that buildup in your body, that that's, what's happening. You get it's calcification. You're getting the hardening, it makes bones more brittle, it causes painful joints and things like that. And so just imagine what it does to your brain too. So it's, to me, it's very important to get those things out. Um, distill, get, using a distiller is very inexpensive, very easy. Um, I know mine, it, it makes, it's very slow. Um, and so I do make, there are, there's normally three of us in the house, but if we have company and things like that, then, you know, I'll have to kind of run it all day long, put yeah. it in quart jars and stick it in the uh, refrigerator so that we have it nice and cold in there. But like I said, I do have filters on my fridge and well water, so I'm not on tap. So I'm not as concerned um, here. Now I have had people ask me, this is totally getting off what you were talking about, um, ask me if I need to add something to it. They're worried about stripping the nutrients from the water, not getting the minerals that are in the water. And um, I guess I'll let you speak to that first if you want or i was sure. i have something i wanted to say about it too well if you're eating enough uh fruits and vegetables and whole grains you're going to get enough minerals and vitamins okay. there's also a fear that the still water will leach your organic minerals mm -hmm. this isn't true i think this rumor got spread because the still water will take out the inorganic materials in the body which you want to get out we're talking about the calcification on the joints and the heart and the brain but it will not touch your organic minerals and vitamins so you don't need to worry about that i mean well you remember the story dr christopher said he had arthritis for years yes and this was a renowned healer and he didn't know what to do about it so he meets this guy at a health food store and he tells dr christopher about distilled water so he starts to drink the distilled water and then his arthritis gets better to where he can walk again because it leached the bad inorganic materials off of his joints. Yes, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I don't think that water is where you're supposed to get your minerals from either. Now, if you have a natural spring, then there may be some minerals that come in that way, but we should get them already assimilated in our fruits and vegetables, um, get them that way. And if you're eating fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, then you're getting the minerals that you need. Sprouted beans, ooh, oh, very yeah. high in your, your vitamins and minerals. And so like we were talking about last week, you wanna make sure you're eating the right foods um, and not the wrong foods. If you're eating fortified foods, enriched flours, things like that, those are supplements that are added. Those are like the inorganic minerals that we were talking about and that are found in uh, your tap water and in my well water. My well water is so hard. You know, it's got those inorganic minerals that need to be filtered. I don't want them in my muscles and joints and anywhere. Yeah, we want them to come in um, and so we think we're using the term organic and inorganic and people think of that as food, sprayed food, not sprayed food, where minerals, if we're saying inorganic, we're saying um, not inside a plant, inside a cell, they're it's like rocks. Um, I know Dr. Christopher says we don't eat rocks, which are what minerals are. We need the forms that are um, organic not the term we're using normally, but inside the cells of the plant, which are easily absorbed into our body and easily pass into our cells. So we don't have rocks going into our cells. We have these natural, um, the natural form of minerals going into our cells. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Because actually that would get confusing <laughs> organic food and yeah. Yes. And I thought we also should talk a little bit about what form we store it in or buy it in. Um, I know I see a lot of people with uh, plastic water bottles in their car. And so 
you can buy spring water in the grocery store in a plastic bottle. Um, but that what we don't see when those are packaged, they're packaged in hot factories, they're heated in the factories, um, they're transported in hot trucks, and the heating of the plastic actually releases microplastics into the water. So while you're drinking spring water, which seems like a great choice, when you drink that, you're actually consuming microplastics, which they're showing, you know, even um, in cord blood and newborns, they're showing uh, plastic. Um, we just need to find ways not to have plastic. So for me, I distill my own water and then I put it in stainless containers or glass. When I drive around or something, um, glass may not be appropriate. It's kind of dangerous. And so I do like the uh, stainless steel containers that can keep it cold. If you do use a plastic bottle, if you're in a, you know, you just don't have a choice, you need water, you know, water is more, having water is more important than not having any water at all. It, um, be careful leaving plastic bottles in your car because the same thing, if it heats, then that, that plastic, it's just going to be too full of plastic. That's, that's too hard on your body. Yes, yeah, a good point. There's like you're saying, they're finding. I saw an article recently about microplastic in people's bloodstreams, <laughs> and this can lead to a whole. I mean, it's their endocrine disruptors. They can lead yeah. to all sorts of problems. It's just other more toxins that me and Jennifer talk about that we had to get out of the body. So, the more you can avoid drinking out of plastic, the cleaner your bloodstream will be. And I recommend the same, you know, what uh, stainless steel containers, glass containers, and I think copper containers is a big thing in India, which there's debate on that. I mean, maybe you'll get too much copper from it, but a lot of yoga instructors, they push copper containers. I don't know. Yeah, I'm still kind of iffy on that one because you can't, there's a fine balance in copper. Yeah, you need, especially. you need copper, especially yeah. for thyroid health, but too much copper can be really dangerous. Yeah. So I'm a little iffy on that one. Um, something that a lot of people ask me about is fluoride. You know, I need to drink um, water because it has fluoride. So uh, how do you respond to that? Well, I don't think fluoride has ever been proven to prevent cavities it's also a neurotoxin i think it was used in one of the wars right world war ii yes it's a, it's a neurotoxin and uh i go to a uh a, bio, a biological dentist and he has the same thoughts on flu fluoride i think it can build it i think well correct me if i'm wrong jennifer but fluoride doesn't it bind to the same receptor sites as bromide in your thyroid yes. gland yes so it blocks iodine from uh from being taken in yeah yeah so, so that's mm -hmm. bad news yes yeah you can have uh toxicity um it's in the same chemical if you look at the um chemical oh what is it called the chart yeah 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 uh, it's the same bromide fluoride iodide they're all in the same um, column there the same weight size they all fit into that receptor and, and block so if you have a high intake of fluoride or bromide from your breads, processed breads, then yeah. you're not going to get the iodine you need, which is going to cause sluggish thyroid, um, hypothyroid, um, low energy. Um, it, and it's like, like you said, and it's highly toxic. Your body yeah. still has to process it. And if you're drinking a lot of water with the high amounts of um, fluor fluoride or fluorine, whatever form it's coming in, then like you said, neurotoxin, and there are a lot of issues there. I know when we were in school, my school, um, after lunch, I can only remember this a year or two, um, after lunch, we would line up outside the school and they'd give us all a little cup of fluoride to swish in our mouth and spit out before we went to class. And now I'm like, oh my gosh, nightmare. Yeah, they're it's killing us. They did the same thing with us. And it, not only was it killing us, but it tasted horrible. Yes. yes. <laughs> what was that Looking about? Back, it's like, what? What? Well, leave it to them. You know, they, they come up with this toxic uh, neurotoxin. And then they say, hey, we can make a fortune off of this stuff. We sell it to the public and tell them it's good for their teeth. Right. <laughs> right. right. It's crazy. Right. 
The it world's crazy. crazy. And yes. the other chemical is chlorine in the water. Yeah, and the same cat, yes. Uh huh. And I've yes. seen studies where chlorine can cause heart disease. Yeah, it's related to so many, it's so, it's so toxic. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, I kind of worry about that in swimming pools. You know, how do you protect your body and your thyroid um, yeah. in swimming pools? I don't swim in them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I look for saline yeah. pools, but yeah, that's another thing. So uh, something else that's normally found in tap water is drugs. Um, so people are told to flush their drugs down the toilet. You know, if you're not going to finish this bottle, then, you know, it's like, wait, what? Don't flush them down the toilet. I mean, in the movies, you'll see people hiding drugs by flushing them um, down the toilet. And th that happens. Yeah. People urine, their drugs are passed out into the toilet water, which all goes to the water treatment center, which is great, except that they don't have ways to neutralize um, those drugs and filter those drugs out. And so they are passed on through. And so you think about that, you know, how many um, oral contraceptives, you know, how many pain meds, so many people are on pain medications, all of those are going into our city water and then passing on um, for consumption. And so that that's pretty scary. And so that's something else that can be, you know, use a little countertop distiller or something and you can get that out. Um, and other chemicals too. Um, we talked about the hard water. I was trying to think about other things. Okay, so what are some ways that we can help people get in more water? Um, for me, I'll tell people to, you know, go ahead, you know, first of all, what's half your body weight. Um, so if you weigh, let's say you weigh 140 pounds, then you need 70 um, ounces of water a day. So I'll just tell them to fill up, you know, quart jars with that much water, have them in the refrigerator, and then throughout the day, drink those if they're home. Um, otherwise, get a water bottle, um, hopefully stainless, um, or the glass that even have like the little rubber covering, um, and take those with you and make sure you're drinking, you know, that much water throughout the day. You know, wake up and drink a glass of water, drink a glass of water before each meal. You know, those are just some other things I have a whole process but um, how do you help people drink more water one practice i teach is as soon as you wake up try to drink 32 ounces of water and it's a good flush it helps start the day a lot of times and it, it'll start a bowel movement so you go ahead and start the day with 32 ounces of water and a good bowel movement because we love those and um and i recommend every episode. That, yes every well this is <laughs> You'll learn how important it is. Um, but yeah, and I carry either your stainless steel or your glass container. You can carry it to work or in your car. And, you know, uh, also, I think that if you every hour you try to drink about it and eight ounces of water, that's a good practice. Mm -hmm. I know it's not, it's not easy, but if you, these are habit. You got to form these habits, you know? Yes. I am. Mean, um, and so something I tell people too, is if you're not drinking a lot of water, don't go from, I don't drink any water at all to 70 ounces of water tomorrow, because yeah. you'll be just running to the bathroom constantly. <laughs> you'll be bloated. You'll feel miserable. So I will tell people to work your way up to that. You know, say if you're not drinking any water and your goal is 70 ounces a day, then you know, let's try to get at least um, 32 ounces today. And then we can slowly increase, you know, maybe by the end of the week, you can get to your 70 ounces a day, or maybe it would take you two weeks. The progress over perfection, always, oh, yeah. um, but do um, slow increments. Something else I tell people to do is not to chug it, um, to sip it. Um, if you oh. are drinking a lot of water um, all at once, your body thinks, oh, a lot more water is going to keep coming in, and then you're just going to be... Um, passing it out. It's a good way to flush your kidneys, but um, you want to keep some of that water in. Um, so sipping it throughout the day is better than um, chugging large glasses throughout the day. Yeah, exactly. Because the body can only absorb so much at a time. That's a good mm -hmm. point. And you said something about, you know, when you're working out, you need to drink more, but uh, something people miss is um, <laughs> if it's really cold, 
Um, sometimes you don't realize that you are burning through your water. You know, your body trying to keep your body warm is actually you need more water. So you like if you go out skiing, which is not something we do here, but if you're out snow skiing and things like that, you need to make sure that you are drinking a lot of water. Even though you're out in the cold, you might not realize that you're sweating. And the same with swimming. Um, if you're out, um, if you do a lot of swimming, you don't know that you're sweating. Um, it's very important to stay well hydrated during those activities too. Yeah, it is. And a lot of, especially in the winter here, we have, when we run the uh, heat pump, you'll wake up and you'll, your skin will be dry. Mm -hmm. the atmosphere in your home in the wintertime is a lot dry and it pulls water out of your body. So there again. Yes. I think that half your body weight is just a starting point for most of us. It's yes. a good starting point. Yes. Yes. Um, I think so, you know, normally you say eight glasses of water a day. Well, you know, a, a child doesn't need the same amount of water as a bodybuilder. And so to say eight ounces, you know, that's just too broad. And so yeah. I think half your body weight is just a good, a good guideline. I know for me, I drink a lot more than that. Um, but then sometimes I wonder, oh, am I drinking too much water? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, and maybe maybe I'm chugging it, and not sipping it. Anyway, did you have anything else? So did we cover everything? So we, how much water? Why you need to drink the water? What type of water? There's this <clears throat> one more thing I'd like to cover is there's this book out there called Your Body's Mini Cross for Water. Have you heard this book? No, I haven't. And it's written by his medical doctor, and he's talking about all of the health problems that are caused by dehydration. I was astounded, like high blood pressure. He said it's because you're dehydrated. He has patients where their blood pressure is high. He gets them on a water regimen. Uh -huh. Their blood pressure comes down to normal. Wow. Your cholesterol can get high if you don't drink enough water. Uh -huh. It throws your blood sugar off. So the point is... Water is a big, well, I don't want to call it a supplement, but it kind of is. If you want to be healthy, you have to stay hydrated because if your body's not hydrated, it does not function properly. So, right. Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot of my information comes from you're not sick, you're thirsty. Uh, um, and so, but you know, like the way you started, you can only go like three days without water. Yeah. Yeah. You can go a really long time without food, but three days without water. It is that vital. We need, I mean, just think about it. Just think about it. I mean, your mouth, you know, moist, your eyes. Yeah. Your skin, you know, we, you know how you feel when your skin is too dry. We need, oh. we need lots of water. So I think that's really important. Yeah, yes. Is. So I think that's probably enough on water for today. Um, I think next time we will talk about protein. And um, as we are going into the new year, there's so many people who are trying things like Veganuary, which is fabulous. I hope people are trying that. Um, and so the number one question anyone asks is, where do you get your protein? And so we will talk about that one on our next episode. Sounds Thank you good. for joining Jen and Dan this week. Um, for more information, look, check the show notes. You can find links to our programs and more information about us there.